countries, have a couple of beers, and discuss a stadium somewhere in the world and their experiences there. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. And we're excited to be here with you tonight. Before we get started with tonight's show, please make sure to subscribe to the Stadium Journey YouTube channel, like this video, and leave a comment. The official Stadium Journey review of today's venue can be found at stadiumjourney.com or shortcut, the link can be found in the comments below. So let's get rolling. Dave, what are you drinking today? So I uh, searched the fridge and I must have bought this at some point in time thinking, hey, this is a brewery that I don't often drink from and it's a unique beer. So it just screams obstructed views. And I have from Bowmanville, Ontario, which is just on the other side of Oshawa. From Chronicle Brewing, uh, kind of a Christmas beer. This is an apple cinnamon pie. And it's a pretty, one of these really blah kind of cans where they just slap a yeah. label on. Um, but that's kind of how you know you really got yourself a microbrewery, I think. You know, <laughs> no fancy cans for it's us. That label. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's actually a, a pleasant surprise. I'm I'm enjoying it. Uh, I thought maybe it would be a little too apple cider-ish, but it's, it's, it's definitely beer, and it's just got that kind of hint of apple cinnamon to it. So uh, it's it's pretty good, and I'm liking it. So awesome. what do you got? All right. So um, a good buddy of mine, Ben, who lived, we went to high school together, now lives up in New Hampshire, um, hit me up when uh, I was up at a UMass Lowell game. And Ben is my go-to guy for anything beer-related. He, Like I said, he lives up in New Hampshire. He has been to every craft brewery in the state of New Hampshire, and I'm not exaggerating. Even even little ones that are like in attics of people's houses and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he called me up and we decided to meet after a game I was covering for Stadium Journey. And he found this place in Andover, Massachusetts, right up near the New Hampshire state line. Oak and Iron Brewing. And what I have, yeah, another fairly simple can too. A little, little more uh, put together than the one you just showed us, but still a simple design. Uh, I have, and I'm going to butcher this name here. It's a Kolsch, and it is called Vorfreud. Vorfreud. Like Schadenfreude? 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 What he said. Vorfreud. <laughs> Fruit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see what just showed up here? A little uh, commercial. Brad Marsh and cereal just showed oh, up. March gosh. Munch. <laughs> Does it little... lick you while you eat it? <laughs> I just float a couple in my beer here and uh, <laughs> we'll see how that tastes. So um, if we are visiting today's destination, you may have some March Munch because we, we are going to be in Boston, Massachusetts. So you may be drinking a Down Under from Cheeky Monkey Brewing in Boston because today we're talking about Matthews Arena, the home of Northeastern hockey and basketball. Before we get started, let's take a look at the stadium vitals. Okay, so we're talking about Matthews Arena, Boston, Massachusetts. It has the... Uh, the honor, I guess, of being the oldest hockey rink still in use anywhere in the world today. It was built in 1910. Trivia question for you listeners. Matthews Arena is the birthplace of two, not one, but two NHL franchises. I doubt anywhere else can say that. Can you name the two NHL franchises that got their state, their state, their start in Boston in Matthews Arena? Oh, 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 pick me, yeah, pick me. Yes, yes, Arnold Horshack. Pick me. <laughs> uh, I'll go with the Boston Bruins. That was the easy one. That was the given. And the Carolina Hurricanes. You are correct, sir. Woohoo! Yep, the uh, Bruins obviously started in 1924 at Matthews Arena, was their first home. And then it was known as the Boston Arena. But in 1972, I don't know, don't know if our all of our listeners know. I'm sure our our hockey Christians out there would know this. But um, 
The Carolina Hurricanes moved there from Hartford, where they were the Hartford Whalers. But the Whalers did not start in Hartford. The Whalers started in Boston in the WHA as the New England Whalers. They started in 1972, and they played at Matthews Arena as well. So Gordy Howe. The Gordy Howe. The Gordy Howe. New England Whalers. Um, or, no, he came along was later. He, that was after. No, he, yeah, he came along later. He came when after he he, Houston first, wasn't it? Uh, Houston and Winnipeg didn't. No, that, I'm thinking of Bobby oh, Hull. Bobby Hull is Winnipeg. <laughs> yeah. But uh, before we started, Dave, you even listed off, you had a list, and I'm not exaggerating, a list of college teams that have played at Matthews. I knew about five of them, but I didn't know about all of them. Yeah, it it wasn't uh, it wasn't just that played there; it was that also got their start there. So we got Boston College, we got Boston University, we got Harvard, we got Northeastern. There you go; you got the Bean Pod. They all so started every, at, at there. Are, those League. are the four that are right in the city. The four D one programs in the city. But then you also have, and I'm I'm not entirely sure of what these all do. Uh, or how, where these all fit in currently, but you've also got MIT, you've got Tufts, you've got Boston State College, and you've got the Wentworth Institute of Technology. Boston State College doesn't even exist anymore. It's UMass Boston now. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. That's uh, quite the spot. Yeah. So uh, a really quick, some ex excerpts from um, the excellent review that's on Stadium Journey. I don't know. Somebody wrote that. We did a little research. But some of the other things that have happened at Matthews Arena, we just want to give you an overview of how historic this place is. Uh, it's named for Georgia Martha Matthews. They renamed it in 1982. Before that, it was named the Boston Arena. Um, Mr. Matthews is a Northeastern alumni. He was, and he is the chairman emeritus of the Board of Trustees of Northeastern. Uh, let's see. We already mentioned the Bruins and the Whalers. The Celtics also played there quite a bit during the 40s and the 50s. Uh, oldest ho indoor hockey rink in the world still in use today. That's just amazing. And if you count, count it as the primary basketball home of the Huskies, I think it's the third oldest NCAA basketball arena still in use. So the, I think uh, you're right. I think, I think third, third oldest is, is Fordham, correct. Fordham and Harvard, I believe are older. I know Fordham is the oldest. Yeah. But not by a lot. No. Um, and Harvard, is, it's kind of cheating. Well, Matthews is kind of cheating too. But Harvard was originally used as something else. They converted it into the basketball gym. Matthews was not used for basketball until very recently. They had a separate gymnasium that they used, the Cabot Gym. Um, so also, not just sports uh, in Matthews Arena. Every president from Theodore Roosevelt to John Kennedy visit, visited Matthews for one reason or another for a political rally or something. And after Kennedy, Richard Nixon and Bill Clinton also did. Um, Charles Lindbergh and Amelia Earhart hosted events there. They used to hold concerts at Matthews. So um, you had the Doors play at Matthews Arena. Jerry Lee Lewis, Marvin Gaye, Ludacris, Bob Dylan, The Roots, Chuck Berry, uh, Fish. So you name it. Anywhere on the musical spectrum, they've been to Matthews Arena. Um, and today it's being used, like you said, the men's and women's hockey teams at Northeastern, as well as the men's basketball team. The women's basketball team plays over at Cabot. And it was also the birthplace of the Beanpot Tournament, which is the biggest college hockey tournament in the world. The, the rink is used by the Wentworth Institute of Technology, as well as half of the high schools in Boston as well. So, um... It's crazy to think about how much stuff has happened in this little gym. Dave, you've been there. You haven't been there for hockey. You've been there for basketball. Yeah. I've been there for both. It is an amazingly different experience for the two sports, but <laughs> it wouldn't make sense to just talk about it for one or just talk about it for the other. So we're going to combine them for tonight's episode. Yeah, and, and I think before you even get into what it's like for each different sport, it it's just the physical presence that you have there. Uh, there's a there's a distinct Matthews Arena entrance, and it's at one end on the corner. Uh, it's got this big. It it's kind of strange. It's it's got this '80s feel to to it, and and I'm sure it's definitely not original. 
big brown brick, but it's it's got this huge archway that goes over like the main entrance doors. And I, I I actually had to look on the Google Maps again because I was like, wait a second, this is it just feels like it should be at an end. And it's not. It's well, it is, but it's not. It's but it's, it's not at a corner the, of a street, right? Yeah, it's on the long side at at one of the corners. So uh you walk in there and immediately what 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 jumped out at me walking into Matthew's arena is it felt like this old theater, like the lobby. Uh, I want to say that they had chandeliers of some sort hanging. I'm not like crystal or anything like that, but like, that's how the lighting is Uh, carpeting. um, You're met by a nice bronze statue of a, of a Husky there. So, you know, you you do have a little bit of a feel to, to Northeastern and it's it's like you're immediately thrown back in time uh and i don't know about you i walked in and i felt a little underdressed <laughs> i'm like i should have a fedora on here and and a top coat or something um as part of the pictures that we're going to show the the people watching this podcast i've got a couple of pictures of what it looked like back in the 20s and 30s that entryway that is now a big brick rectangle used to be ornately decorated and painted and looked so different. So yeah, it was it was a theater. It looked more like a theater than a than a hockey rink. And yeah, you do get that feeling of I've stepped back in time. I shouldn't be wearing a jersey here. I should be wearing a what were those hats called? The bowler bowler hat. A bowler <laughs> so, hat maybe? Yeah. yeah, or, yeah. or a fedora or uh, yeah. Yeah, or fedora. Something something more than uh than your northeastern husky hat baseball yeah. hat there. And I I, I don't know um I mean, I always equate that look with like Maple Leaf Gardens, right? And, and Toronto back in the day was a very, very conservative city. It was dry, uh, closed on Sunday. And if you went to see the Maple Leafs in like the 60s, you wore a top coat, you wore a fedora, you dressed up to go to see the Leafs. It was, it was like church. I love those old pictures of like football games or hockey games and everybody's dressed to the nines and very serious looking and like yeah, maybe, yeah. You maybe maybe clap like this. But <laughs> and now it's the complete opposite, right? If you see somebody walking in like that, you're like, what's wrong with this guy? And and you know, I think some of the women are even worse. You're like, you see them all dressed up, and you're like, that doesn't fit. <laughs> that doesn't fit in this in this environment. But yeah. Are you trying to impress lady? <laughs> <laughs> So you go from there, and and then you walk into the arena part, and which is funny because if you go into the uh, the uh, lobby, there's a little concession stand there on your left, and there's a yep. real little one at the far end in case if it's a big crowd, they just have some snacks there. You walk in, the arena's over here on the right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, and it, and it, I guess that kind of adds to that theater piece to it. Like it, you're not walking around. You uh, you know that you. Well, you can walk around when you're in the arena part, but it doesn't have that sort of 360 concourse that we're we're used to, or exterior concourse, or under the the stands concourse. Uh, when you're walking around inside, you're walking around inside, and the inside immediately. And keep in mind, I, I went for basketball. The feeling is, and, and one of my favorite sayings, of course, of all time, old school hockey barn, uh, peaked roof with the with the girders. Hardwood ceiling, um, it, it just smells like like old hockey and and uh, a different a, a very different feel than basketball. You know, of course that they, they've done renovations forever, right? Like there's there's tons and tons of renovations that they've done. Obviously, like the seats are pretty modern. Um, I I would say for basketball, it gets caught in that the conversion for basketball is basically they drop a floor in the center and, and haul out the nets and that's it. They don't do yeah, there's really much the ends, no. else in the way of seating the bands at the end. Um, I guess you do have kind of two tiered seating for basketball. That's pretty irrelevant. You know, you don't need to sit up top unless you really are wanting to, they don't get that kind of, I don't think they get that kind of crowd where, where the upper bowl is, is a thing or is needed? Well, um, my first basketball game that I went to at Matthews Arena, they were hosting Michigan State, who was number one at the time. And the place did sell out for that game. 
but okay. I've been but I've been three other times and it's generally one to two thousand people. They generally average about fifteen, seventeen hundred. So yeah, you can get a ticket and sit wherever you please. And I don't know when I was there my last time because I was doing a review. I sat half the game in the lower level, half the game on the upper level. I Actually, like that's it. what I did too. Yeah. Uh, and I was all alone up there. Yep, me too. <laughs> uh, but I figured that the pictures were going to be better that up there than right than down. Um, so you do have that kind of, and maybe to to quantify it better, it's like the the bones are are old school hockey as opposed to the whole thing, um, because the the seats are not wooden, you know, the girders are are, are painted. Um, you know the the accentures are all are all neat, uh, like it doesn't look run down or anything like that. Um, and then, you know, your eyes are unfortunately taken away from the plethora of banners, many of which are very interesting. You know, you do have a banner for the Bruins, you have a banner for the Celtics, and and their history there to go along with. A ton of northeastern hockey banners, some basketball banners. Uh, Reggie Lewis retired. I was member. Reggie Lewis. Yep. Two. Reggie Lewis went to school there, and actually Reggie Lewis, who uh, went to school there and was drafted in the first round by the Celtics, played for the Celtics, was their captain, and yeah. who passed away playing for the Celtics. His funeral was held at Matthews Arena. Oh wow, that's that's pretty wow. But yeah, then you, your eyes go to this. <laughs> it's almost gaudy. This giant video board, four four sided uh, video board, not square. Um, it's 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 almost Jerry World like, like it feels like it goes from baseline to baseline with the basketball. It's it's really huge. I mean, it's great technology wise, but it's like this does not fit the feel of Matthews right. Arena. It is fifty feet long by thirteen and a half feet high. Okay. Now the old scoreboard, I yeah, you I think you saw the scoreboard before I actually did. I had gone there a few times with the old scoreboard, which was a regular, it was a good scoreboard, but it was a regular square thing that you see in most arenas back in the 90s or zeros or whatever. And then you said that scoreboard at Northeastern is just out of control. Like, what are you talking about? And then I think I went to a game <laughs> later that season and said, Holy cow, this is just this doesn't feel right here. Yeah. Yeah, it just it, I don't know. It just it really takes your, it takes the light, the the sight line away from all of the other pieces, which are which are really kind of neat. Uh, but yeah, it, and and it doesn't feel like it fits. It 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 just I don't know. It just doesn't feel like it meshes properly. So in, in a 1910 arena to have a 2010 scoreboard, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a strange thing. That's not a 2010 scoreboard. That's a 2020 scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> So, yeah, um, when you go into a basketball game, like we had mentioned and uh, David mentioned, it's not a big crowd. The student section is a few rows down on the floor on the side. They don't put them at the end because, like Dave said, they the band's at one end, but they don't – the ends are just kind of dead space. They put them, they put them along one side, on a sideline. It's not an overwhelming crowd. Now, you want to talk about a, a student section, and you and I are always talking about how a student section makes or breaks – the experience at arena. If you go to a hockey game at BU, the student section overflows. It's known as the doghouse. And so you, you, you're picturing Northeastern in your mind. The doghouse is in the upper tier at one end and the upper tier at the other end because there's just so many kids. Nice. And they've got the repertoire of chants and they don't stop the whole game. Uh, they're the uh, they're my favorite student section of any school I've been to. I've been to 26 different hockey venues for NCAA. I've been to a, another 25 or so basketball and a couple football. They don't they're not the same, but that, they're by far and large my favorite one. During the bean pot tournament that just occurred, the student turnout was so strong. I think the whole school showed up because they almost they had three quarters of the upper deck. Of all, it was all Northeastern students. It was just at the crazy. garden there, at the garden, and wow. then then they played Harvard, and Harvard had the band and maybe a couple dozen other kids. <laughs> it was quite a juxtaposition. To and that was smart word. I think you were saying the first time ever in twenty twenty three was a, a, a Northeastern Harvard 
final in the bean pot? Bean pot, this was its 70th season. It's the first time Northeastern and Hart. There's only four schools that play in the bean pot. You figure by blind chance they would have met up, but this was the first time they met up in the finals. Wow. Now, yeah. do, does it always, does it rotate as to who starts with who? Or it's a Yeah, they, they cycle the four teams around. So if you go three years in a row, you'll see everybody play everybody in the first round. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty oh, wild. Uh, yeah. I I mean, I liked I liked going. Like I said, for basketball, uh, I could you could tell you could just tell it. This is this is a hockey arena, and knowing, you know, northeast <laughs> northeastern uh, college hockey in the northeast, uh, and you have those those historic schools uh, who have who have all been in the Frozen Four at one point or another, uh, multiple times actually. Uh, you know, you could just feel that this would be a place. And I'd love to go. Um, you know, basketball, they're nah, I mean, they're not in the greatest conference. They're in a pretty they're in a pretty pretty small conference. Um I mean to to say the CAA, I guess they're a mid major because everybody's a mid major that isn't a major. Right. But they <laughs> they really feel like kind of That's a down at the bottom yeah, a bottom low of the major as opposed to a mid major. And North Northeastern generally does not compete in that conference. I mean, once in a while, like when they had Reggie Lewis running around, you know, they would win the conference. But aside from that, basketball really lags far, far behind at this school. Which is funny because among the four Boston hockey schools for a long, long time, Northeastern was the poor stepchild of those four. But there's been a concerted effort recently to improve the Northeastern hockey experience, and they have ended up winning four out of the last six bean pots. So, hmm. and they've been nationally ranked pretty much for that whole time. So, and, and not that, and not that in in I mean they're in a really good conference for them in hockey, of course. Yes, uh, in basketball. You know, I guess I guess you've got you know school in Delaware and and Jersey and Pennsylvania and whatnot, but they're really kind of up there on their own. Like, there's not another New England school in that conference, which can't help. Um, oh no, you know. So I it, it would be it would be a whole lot better if if they had more of a a, a rival in their conference, but uh, you know it is what it, it is what it is. I guess so. Yeah, I think they're one of the four uh, leftover schools that didn't have a home, so the Colonial Conference is kind of grabbed. These are the these are the good academic schools that are left without a without a place to play. So we have to <laughs> them all together. Yeah, you're right. The, um, the closest one I would say would maybe be Hofstra is the closest school to them in the conference. So they are they are in Stony Brook. They are out on an island. Uh so. If you're at Northeastern, you have enough of the game. The game's over, and you've seen all the history that you could possibly take in. It's in a pretty darn good location if you're traveling to Boston from out of town. Uh, right around the corner from Northeastern is Symphony Hall and the Museum of Fine Arts. And just a few blocks away is the Back Bay neighborhood, which is one of the top tourist destinations in the city. So there's a lot to do right close by and i think i i if if you're not if you're not cultured and and you're just looking for no more symphony. sports no symphony for you i love the symphony actually but uh when i've always I wanted to, boston, to go to the boston pops sorry so i've always wanted to go to the boston pops never have i i would love to go too but you know john williams is retired so just i don't know <laughs> but that being said when I went to see Northeastern, I did triple hitter that day. I saw Northeastern hockey, or sorry, Northeastern basketball, and I believe they were playing hockey that night. They were going to turn that around and 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 play an evening game there. I've done that double header. It's fantastic because there's some good bars to hit up in between the <laughs> two games. <laughs> so I did Northeastern basketball, Boston College hockey in in the late afternoon and then i i gunned it up to to your home providence uh, the the former dunk and, and saw providence play basketball but there were other options too i mean there were other things i could have done like i said i could have got back to northeastern to go to the hockey game that night um you know it, it 
it was a it was a situation where it was like I was picking between which which sports can I all fit in here and and you know it's like it, it, it was like a buffet <laughs> indeed you can do that in Boston have you ever seen the movie Spinal Tap oh yeah there's a great throwaway line in there where the show Boston gets canceled and the manager says ah don't worry it's not a college town anyway <laughs> <laughs> so yeah if you're I mean there's not a lot of big time college sports in Boston but man there's a lot of college sports in Boston um, another thing the campus of Northeastern is located on the site of the old Huntington Browns, which was the original home of the Boston Red Sox. Okay. And also located there, you got the, it was here, you got the train tracks, which are now the subway tracks, I'll do it this way. And on this side, you had the old South End Grounds, which was the original home of the Boston Braves. So... If you're a fan of sports history, you can tootle on about a quarter mile to maybe a third of a mile. It's not fun in the winter. I've done it many times, but it's still close. Third of a mile, maybe. They have a statue set up on on one of the small quads, a statue of Cy Young, on the approximate site of the original pitching mount. And they've got home plate located 60 feet away from them. And then they've got a foul pole located on one of the buildings where the left field foul pole was. So you can go check those markers out from famous from the famous Huntington grounds. Well, I know from, from my standpoint, um, like I did do three games that day. Uh, I did do one the day before went to Harvard hockey the day before, uh, there, there's gotta be a return trip in there because there's a whole lot of other things to do that I haven't done there yet. And that's just college sports. And, and I am going to take, I am going to take, uh, take note of what you, like you said, not a lot of big time college sports. I'll give you not, you're not going to get a lot of big time college football. You're not going to get a lot of big time college basketball, but you are going to get the cream of the crop of college hockey. Really? Yes. If, if I, I think you're going to look at the, the, the Northeast new England area, you're going to look at Minnesota, you're going to look at Michigan, and those are your three yep. major college hockey hotbeds. The three M's, like they say in, in the United States, if you want great hockey, go to the three M's. Minnesota, Michigan, Massachusetts. But don't sleep on the basketball. You know, it doesn't have to be Carolina or, or you know, Duke or whatever. I mean, you go go to a smaller uh, a smaller school. I I had a blast at Northeastern. There wasn't a ton and ton of people there, but it didn't matter. Harvard always bangs out their gym, and it's a cozy little gym. Check that out. Uh, Boston College, some, they have some up years where the basketball there is fantastic. Um, Boston University plays on the roof of a hockey rink. So they got that going for it. It's pretty unique. So, And then you got the suburbs. You got UMass Lowell. You got Bentley. You got... Holy Cross, you got Providence, you got New Hampshire. There's so many choices, like you said. And you're in Boston, one of the best cities in the country to visit. So, and that's not, not that's the not best coming. To drive in. Oh, no. Take the subway. Take the subway. <laughs> Very convenient if you go into Matthews Arena, two subway stops within a block away, either way, either direction. So, there you go. So, Matthews Arena, one of the more historic, interesting places to go catch a game whether you're catching basketball or whether you're catching hockey and it's why we love to do stadium journeys old barns like matthews so thanks for joining us we hope to see you again on the road real soon cheers cheers